All right, we're going to go ahead and install our injectors. Normally, I would replace these O-rings every single time. That's one of those things that if it leaks, it'll leak uh, fuel in the oil. Um, but there's three O-rings here. The way you replace them is you don't roll them on and off, but we're going to lock them on and off like so, right? Put them back on the same way. I'm not going to take them off because I don't want to stretch them since I'm reusing them. Okay. Some soil glide. Make sure they're good and loose. You don't want to sure don't want to rip one going in and out. The way this fuel system works, one of these is the supply and one's a return. I believe the bottom one is your supply. So there's a rail in the head that's filled with fuel. And that is how fuel gets to it. So it'd be coming through here and it's gonna return here. Because all these newer fuel systems like this are gonna return quite a bit of fuel. It helps cool it. Uh, lubricate the injectors, um, that type of stuff. Uh, the new common rails will return a lot more than these do, but these return quite a bit. And we had a, a Volvo engine that's similar to this in a generator, and I had the fuel valves switched up. All I can tell you is this, it, it pumped 300 gallons out of a fuel tank in a matter of about half an hour. So they return a bunch of fuel. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and clean all these holes out where the injectors go. Screwdriver and a rag works pretty good. Look in there and make sure they're good and clean. That's okay. Actually perfectly clean. They're, they're clean. Now if you would have, if you were doing this and changing injectors, the other thing you need to do is suck the fuel out of the holes after you pull them out. Some kind of evac system. This is a um, transducer and I've got a little piece of airline hooked to it. Basically it'll go down and fit down the holes and I'd suck all the fuel out. Make sure there's nothing. This hooks up to air and it acts like a big air vacuum. This sprays everywhere, makes a mess, so make sure you're aware of that when you do that. Okay, we're gonna install our injectors. I've lubed up the O-rings, made sure the holes are clean. I need to put my, let's see. I don't know if these will go in afterwards. They will. Okay. Push them in by hand. You'll feel them click in. Uh, like I said, this is pretty critical. If you tear an O-ring, it'll cause some issues. So you definitely don't want to do that if you can help it. And you want to make sure they're centered in between the valves. That's me being anal more than anything. Well, if it was off far enough, it could potentially hang up on a valve too. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. There. Anyways, we're going to run all our crabs in, or hold down the bolts. These are usually a one use thing. Um, most of the time they're supposed to be replaced because it's a critical torque. What will happen, the, a lot of them have a, a copper a carbon ring they call it that seals it to the injector cup. Uh, it seals it to the injector cup, and if that's not there, it, 
it'll leak combustion gases into the fuel system. Okay, like I said earlier, we're getting our crabs put in. I'm gonna make sure they're centered in the bores. Looks like they are pretty well. And then they torque the 49 foot pounds. Now I can use an extension because an extension doesn't change my torque value. If I use the torque adapter, it sure would, but that's one that I would change the length of the wrench. I'm not doing that though. The straight line will give us a proper torque. And it's uh, the book I believe says 41 to 49. I didn't lube them, so I'm going to 49. Another thing, a lot of these injectors have what we call cal codes on them. This particular one uh, doesn't have the capability of changing it because it's VDEC 2. Uh, it might have been VDEC 3 and 4 that they changed that, but it's kind of hard to see. But there's a number stamped on this little plate here, and they're all exactly the same. That's a, basically a rating of how much fuel it's going to put out. Okay, we're going to put our injector harness in, which is this guy here. It comes through this hole in the back of the cylinder head. We have to snake all the wires through this little tiny hole. If there were a Jake break on this, this would also be part of that. This particular one does not have a jig brake on it though. Okay, we're gonna roll this through here. Okay, there's a rubber boot here you can kind of see. This one's actually seen better days. There's a collar here. And it has two bolts that hold it in there. Like I said, this boot goes in here. I'll set here. Make sure you don't get any wires where you can pinch them or anything like that. Oops. The camera. This is going to go down here to help guide it. Tighten it up. The other side of that harness we just put in goes through here, get it routed correctly, there's not a lot to this one, there's two plugs, uh, one's for uh, 135 injectors and the other's for 246 I believe, these plugs have had a lot better days, they only go in one way, clips are both missing off both of these. Well, that's handy. That one, okay. Yeah, you see the plugs don't intermix, so those go in there and that's done. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hook up our injectors. So, two fingers with a nut driver. Don't ever, ever, ever use a wrench on these. We'll snap these off right now. Oh, let's go through the big part of the hole and pull back on it. They torque to like 10, no, not even 10, 6 inch pounds, but two fingers. Just like that. Uh, polarity doesn't matter on these, but they usually lay how they came off, so that's not an issue. You'd think it would, but it really is just a solenoid turning on and off. Like I said, two fingers. It's, um, I'd have to look it up, but I want to say it's like <laughs> six inch pounds which seems tight. 
I had a guy get a, a 3 8 ratchet and an adapter and put these on once and he snapped four of them off on the other 60 series we have here in the shop. Um, that's about a two, two to $3,000 screw up. These injectors are not cheap at all. Like I said, it might look like I'm torque reefing them down, but I'm not. I'm just doing it with two fingers here. If you use a wrench on these, I guarantee you'll break them. So, so don't do that. Like I said, there is a torque spec if you look it up, but if you do it this way, you'll be okay every time. Most people don't have an inch-pound torque wrench to go this small, so. Like I said, two fingers. Just like that, okay?